Hello everybody out there watching on YouTube and welcome to race number 13 of season 5 of the NNS CRA Marvel Studios Cup Series. I'm Levi McIntyre, the voice of the NNS CRA Marvel Studios Cup Series, here to welcome you to the Coca-Cola 600 here at Charlotte Motor Speedway as we are getting set for 60 laps of racing here at Charlotte. It's going to be the longest race of the season and a lot could happen in this race. But before we take a look at the starting lineup, as per, we got to take a look at the point standings after last week, which, if I recall, I believe was Darlington. So, Joshua Collard has the points lead still, and he leads by 11 points over Carson Gum. Third is Dylan Jacobs, fourth Paul Minnick, fifth Sean Galligan, sixth is Benjamin Miles, seventh James McLeod, eighth James Qualls, ninth Emmanuel Hartnett, and then tenth Matt McIntyre. So that would be how the chase would look going into, uh, well, the race tonight, if the chase were to start. But after this race, we still got 13 races until the chase were to begin. But let's take a look at the starting lineup. Starting in the last row, we have two of those drivers in the top 10 in points, James McLeod and Sean Galligan, if I'm correct. Yes, indeed. Top 10 in the starting lineup, uh, Zachary Fitzwater is on the pole for tonight. Starting next to him is Joshua Sakuli. Row 2 is rookie Ethan Hoffman and Jake Baskinger. Row 3, James Shelley, Preston Plourd. Row 4, Alex Drayden, Trent Dunham. And then row 5, Colin Francis and Jonathan Zorlin. But let's go ahead and get the command to fire engines for the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte. Drivers! Start your engines! So all 40 drivers on the racetrack for their pace lap around here. So we did a test here uh, just before I recorded and just to get a feeling for how the drivers are going to be racing. And from what I could tell, pretty much early on, it looks like it's going to be the outside lane that would get the bigger run. But then as the race were to progress, if it were to stay green the whole way through, then the bottom would start kicking in. Plus pitch strategy is going to be a big thing in this race for sure considering it's 60 laps the uh, pit multiplier set to two times so we could be in for something special as the pace car pulls in the pit road so you know what time it is don't you well in case you don't it is time to boogity 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 go racing So it was Joshua Sakuli who led the first lap, but now Ethan Hoffman has the race lead. But he got James Shelley trying to work the bottom to get around the 99. It, I guess it depends on draft, really, is to determine which lane is going to really work out. In that case, Hoffman was able to use the outside to keep James Shelley at bay because there were more cars on the outside. Right now, Hoffman going to move down low in front of the 71 of James Shelley. And also, keep in mind, there will be a commercial break for this race at around lap 28. So, just a little heads up for all of you. Meanwhile, a potential battle for third might start between... 
Stuart Haas teammates, Alex Drayden and Colin Francis, but Drayden, because of that draft help, is going to keep that spot for now. So like I said, it all depends on how many cars you've got behind you in a draft that seems to really determine which lane's going to prevail. However, no restrictor plates at this track. It's just all about speed and precision as well as uh, cooperation of other drivers. But right now, Alex Drayden trying to get the bottom to kick in. Like I said, perhaps as we get into a longer run, the bottom lane will kick in a lot more than the outside. Of course, depending on how many cars you've got behind you. But ever since taking the lead on lap two, I believe, Ethan Hoffman has held on to the lead for a little bit, but still a long, long way to go. And I see three wide back here. Oh, and there they go. Oh, my goodness. Trent Dunham up into the catch fence. Oh, and a little bit of swirliness up there. But my goodness, that was a crazy wreck. Dylan Jacobs, Seth Cole, and Trent Dunham were caught up in this. Caution comes out. Ethan Hoffman still hanging on to the race lead. I kind of had a feeling that once I saw them go three wide, something was going to give. Right there in turn one, we just had a crazy, crazy wreck. Dylan Jacobs, however, came through with very little damage, but I think he's going to be off the pace. Seth Cole got quite a bit more damage as he got slammed into the outside wall. Let's take a look and see if he's going to be able to continue. Looks like he's going to try. Meanwhile, Dylan Jacobs, uh, maybe if he gets that damage repaired enough, he could still be in contention, but I'm not holding my breath for it. Yeah, I'm not holding my breath for that. But anyways, everybody looks like is coming into pit road. So we're going to keep an eye out and see who is going to come out first. And it looks like majority of the field is going to go with fuel only. Just to get that little bit of extra juice to uh, keep it going on the racetrack. So it looks like it's going to be Hoffman, Shelley, Drayton, Francis, and Dollarton the top five when we get back to green but before we do that let's take a look at the replay to see what brought the caution out for the first time tonight here at Charlotte so here's a look at what happened so they were three wide right here and then we're gonna see how this all plays out and it looks like I'm not sure if the 78 got a little bit loose or the 98 just came down, but they all come up into Trent Dunham. And as you can see, look at that wild, wild ride Trent Dunham goes on. And he's just skidding on the catch fence and the wall, but somehow did not flip in that incident. And then you see a couple cars getting sideways and together up there trying to avoid, and they do a great job of uh, not causing a secondary incident as uh, let's actually take a look at this one more time from this camera shot so yeah it's like almost like as if Seth Cole was just just the meat in the sandwich between Trent Dunham and Dylan Jacobs and yeah Dylan Jacobs got some right side damage and a little bit of rear end damage but it looks like it could be easily repairable for him to get back out on the racetrack but Let's actually look at this one more time via helicopter view, and this will definitely tell us what really happened. Oh no, it was Trent Dunham. He came down into Seth Cole, into Dylan Jacobs. So I was wrong. It actually it was from Trent Dunham kind of trying to stay off the wall, but got into Seth Cole, and result got into the 78, and that's how it all started. But a wild ride for Trent Dunham, nonetheless. Seth Cole, I feel, is going to be the most likely one off the pace. Dylan Jacobs is going to be a bit questionable, but we're going to find out how he's going to be able to continue. Same with Seth Cole. Trent Dunham, I feel like, is going to be definitely out of the race. But let's go ahead and take you to the restart here at the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte. So after that first caution, as expected, one car completely done for tonight and will not get points is Trent Dunham. Seth Cole, meanwhile, has gone a lap down. So we're down to 39 on track, 38 cars on the lead lap. But everybody came in the pit road under caution, and Ethan Hoffman is still your race leader. 
Second is James Shelley. Third, Alex Drayden. Fourth, Colin Francis. Fifth is Chris Dollarton. Sixth is Colin Phillips. Seventh, Dougie Shears. Eighth is Zachary Fitzwater. Ninth is uh, Patrick Smith. Tenth is Carson Gum. Rest of the top 20. Eleventh is Joshua Sakuli. Twelfth, Jay Jefferson. Thirteenth, DJ Curtis. Fourteenth, Preston Blord. Fifteenth, Anthony McCrory. Sixteenth, Jessica Shelton. 17th is Emmanuel Hartnett, 18th, Charles Sanford, 19th, Benjamin Miles, 20th, Joshua Collard. Rest of the top 30, James McLeod, James Qualls, Jake Rogers, Tim Fiegel, Paul Minnick, Jake Baskinger, Rafael LaDuke, Brian Butcher, Kyle Matthews, Cody Lamas, and then Matt McIntyre, Jonathan Zorlin, Dylan Pote, Dylan Thoreau, uh, Diego Yapez, Dylan Young, Sean Galligan and Dylan Jacobs, who looks like he's got his car almost all the way repaired, but we're back underway. Going to keep an eye on the 78 for a little bit just to see if he's going to still be able to run up to speed, and it looks like he's able to. I don't know what went wrong here with the 32 of Matt McIntyre. I don't know if he missed a shift or he got into it on pit road. It could have been the case because I saw Sean Galligan right here. He's got a slight buckle on the hood of his race car. I don't know. I'm thinking perhaps the 32 has missed a shift because he's not able to get up to fourth gear or at least not yet. He's still stuck in third. Same with Dylan Poteet in fact. I can't believe I forgot to mention anything about Poteet. So I got a feeling that those two may have blew fourth gear and now they can't go faster than perhaps 165 if they could even get there. But everyone else still remains up to speed, but then again, Seth Cole, who's slow, he's holding up everybody in the back here, but that does help for a lot of guys on that bottom lane to go on right by. But you can tell a lot of drivers aren't going to be too happy with Seth Cole, including affiliate teammate Jay Jefferson. Meanwhile, yeah, I've got a suspicion that perhaps the 32 and the 31 have blue fourth gear and they can't go faster than, yeah, 162, maybe 163. So that's a tough break for those two guys. But back up here at the front, completely forgot to go up to the front for the restart, but James Shelley has taken the lead over. But it's a very, very small group of cars up here at the front as a result of the 98 of Seth Cole kind of being in the way of a lot of drivers, causing a massive separation. So it looks like unless something drastic were to occur, it looks like it will be the top nine now are really going to be racing it out for quite a while. Speaking of racing it out... Almost got a battle for second going on between Ethan Hoffman and Dougie Shears, but Hoffman, remember early on in a green flag run, it's the bottom lane, or not the bottom, the top lane that gets the bigger run depending on draft. But now let's see what happens now is here comes Shears with a huge run on the bottom. <clears throat> and it looks like he's going to be able to clear him. Maybe, let's see, off of... Four, and he does clear to 99, so move. Dougie Shears, who has uh, won two of the last... Two of the last three or so races, points-wise. So he's been on a little bit of a roll, although they are about to catch Matt McIntyre and Dylan Poteet, and this can really, really mess things up. And depending on how other drivers are going to go around, Shelly going to go way up high and now he's going to cross over to the bottom to get around Poteet but this could be a golden opportunity for and there you see him led by Emmanuel Hartnett the second group of cars to get back up here into the picture of things although the top two have sort of broken away from everyone James Shelley and Dougie Shears the only hope for the guys behind them to even catch them is if these two start racing it out. And momentarily, probably within the next two or three laps, they're going to catch Seth Cole. Let's actually go back to uh, see if we can't get to the 31 and the 32 again. Alright, so I guess they uh, managed to get back up to fourth gear, but I don't know. Maybe there's something wrong with the engines of the 31. 
of Dylan Poteet and the 32 of Matt McIntyre. Although Matt McIntyre is still in third gear. Anyways, uh, we're keeping an eye on certain things back here. But how about Ethan Hoffman? He led early on and now he's fallen way back here to 30, or no, actually 22nd as a result of lap traffic being in the way. And oh, they're three wide again. But they're keeping it together, at least for now. Although I've got a bad feeling we could be in for a big, big wreck right here. If they don't settle it out, and it looks like they do settle it out back to double wide. So smart job on the part of those guys. And also they got Seth Cole to contend with. So that's going to cause even more issues. But back up here at the front with a big lead now of over a second right now. Colin Francis, but I got a feeling that's going to... That lead's going to get smaller and smaller here in the next couple of laps, considering look at the guys behind them running in a draft. And they're working together, and now they have caught the 41 again. So, make that big lead completely gone. And in fact, they gained over a second on the 41. And Shelly back to the lead. But here comes Jessica Shelton, who has won the Daytona 500. Could she go two huge races in a row? as far as prestige goes. I don't know, it's gonna be interesting to see for sure. Nonetheless, however, James Shelley currently holds on to that spot, but here comes Jake Rogers, who's all of a sudden come from out of nowhere, and now he's up here in the second position. Jake Baskinger behind him, and then you got the points leader, Joshua Collard having a great run right now. But we're still a little bit of ways away off from halfway. But here in about five laps, we will have our commercial break. Anyways, back up here. Shelly hanging on strong, at least for now. Although they are probably going to end up catching Matt McIntyre here in about a lap. Poteen may be a little bit longer, and same with Seth Cole. But yeah, you can tell the field has definitely gotten a little more spread out. Except for that uh, first and second pack of cars. Meanwhile, Collard is going to take advantage of that slow car of Matt McIntyre. And Collard now has the race lead. In fact, the top three have broken away now. Collard, Shears, and Dollarton. But now they are approaching Dylan Poteed. And Poteed's going to let him go up high. But let's see what he's going to do with the second group of cars. How they're going to get around the 31. Looks like although DJ Curtis getting held up. And now so is everyone else. Contact between Drayton and with Duke. And there they go! Hard crash! Colin Francis, oh, they're gonna be back in front of traffic! Hard hits for Colin Francis. Big one here on the back stretch at Charlotte. Numerous cars damaged. Tim Fiegel, Ethan Hoffman. Looks like Preston Plord was in it. Zachary Fitzwater, James McLeod. Jonathan Zorley, and then they're still wrecking! Oh, and they, we got more incidents that took place. Cars upside down. Ethan Hoffman just barrel rolled. I think I saw Anthony McCurry. Jessica Sheldon with major damage. A lot of cars caught up in this one. This is going to be an extensive replay, so I think we might as well cancel the commercial break because of this. Holy cow, and a lot of top 10 points drivers involved. Sean Galligan was in it, I saw. Matt McIntyre was caught up in this. A lot of key contenders. But Joshua Collard, still the race leader, and everybody's back in the pit road. But, man, we're going to have a laundry list of cars that are going to be done for today. Like right there, Zachary Fitzwater is teleported out of the pit road into the garage. So he is done for today. Collard, he's going to uh, 
keep the race lead. He's going to come out of the pits first. So the top five when we get back to racing is going to be Joshua Collard, Chris Dollarton, Dougie Shears, James Shelley, and Patrick Smith. So let's go ahead and take a look at the replay of what brought the caution out for the second time here in the Coke 600 at Charlotte. Well, here's a look at what happened. So Rafael LeDuc going into turn one has such a massive run. And Alex Drayton looked like he was attempting to come down. However, LeDuc just flat out bulldozed into Alex Drayton right there. And they're both just door to door trying to get off each other. But then you got the LeDuc on the apron not having much car control. And then he's going to end up sliding up into the 14 and then Carson Gum got a little piece and then right there Colin Francis sent into the outside wall hard and then a big hit from James McLeod which sent the 41 airborne but the big stuff's going to happen right around here with the 41 of Colin Francis but there's going to be more we're going to take a look at right there a huge hit from Matt McIntyre and then another big hit from Dylan Thoreau. And then everyone's just going to get blocked up by the smoke and just run right into one another. And, yeah, just a whole wad up mess back here as a result of some uh, rough racing, if you ask me, from the 77 of uh, Rafael LeDuc. But now let's try and... Oh, and it already started up here, the second crash. Let's take a look at it. Oh, it was from the six of Ryan Butcher. He was on the apron avoiding whatever happened, but Jay Jefferson flat out dumped the six of Ryan Butcher and collected Jessica Sheldon, and that sent Ryan in for a hard hard impact into the outside concrete wall but then more major craziness is going to occur here in just a moment right there Rafael Duke hits the six of Ryan Butcher and that's what caused his car to be completely destroyed but let's look at this right here McCrory hard hit then a hit from Cody Lamas and this is what sends the 61 completely airborne and the 6 on his side and McCurry actually goes for a quick barrel roll while the 6 just rode on his side. But then right there, Diego Yapez hard into the 48 which got him spinning and then there's another incident that took place. LaDuke actually goes on his side and the Charles Sandfer, who we're going to take a look at, he came flying in here. Let's see how this happened. It looks like he gets into one of the cars on the apron. Let's see how this happens. Oh, Dylan Jacobs. I wonder how he got involved. And he got into Jessica Sheldon. And then right there, a hard hit into Josh Joshua Sakuli, who was stopped. And that's what sent the 03 upside down. And look at that. McCrory on top of the 48 of, of uh, Cody Lamas. And then Kyle Matthews. And now here comes, in the frame, the flipping 99 of Ethan Hoffman. Let's see how, look at how he, first he hits Zorlin and then got hit hard by Preston Plourd. But how in the world did the 78 get involved? Oh, he's, oh, this is going to be brutal. Right in that spot on the apron in the racetrack, hard hit into Jessica Sheldon, sent her airborne like a top. And that's what caused the 78's damage. So probably more than half the field is going to be done for today as a result of this chaos. And there was how Emmanuel Hartnett got involved. And there you see the flipping 99 of Ethan Hoffman going for a wild ride. Ah, Hoffman, who was an early race contender, led early on and then ended up marred back in traffic. And his day is going to be cut short. So let's go ahead and take you to the restart here at Charlotte. Well, we are down to 18 cars on track, 16 on the lead lap. Major casualties out of this race. From 19th on back, they are done. Preston Plourd, Sean Galligan, Zachary Fitzwater, Anthony McCrory, Jessica Sheldon, Jonathan Zorlin, Joshua Sakuli, Ethan Hoffman, Cullen Francis, James McLeod, Rafael LaDuke, 
Dylan Thoreau, Ryan Butcher, Diego Yapez, uh, Cody Lamas, uh, Emmanuel Hardnett, Kyle Matthews, and then the bottom five who are not getting points now are Tim Vigel, Charles Sanford, Dylan Jacobs, Matt McIntyre, and Trent Dunham. Two cars, two laps down, Seth Cole and Dylan Poteet. Top ten when we get back racing, Joshua Collard, Chris Dollerton, Dougie Shears, James Shelley, Patrick Smith, Jake Rogers, Alex Strait, DJ Curtis, Dylan Young, Carson Gum, and then James Qualls, the Paul Minnick, Colin Phillips, Benjamin Miles, Jake Baskinger, and Jay Jefferson. We are now halfway through to Coke 600 here at Charlotte, 30 laps in, 30 to go. And we're down to pretty much 16 key contenders, 18 left all together on the racetrack. After probably, for sure, the biggest wreck we have had all season long. That pretty much took out about 21 cars. And as you can see, the, the, the uh, pack has been separated into two as a result of the slower traffic of Seth Cole and Dylan Cote. But back up here at the front, Joshua Collard, who leads the points. However, he has not won a race yet. This could be the golden opportunity for that 43 team to get his first win of the season. Meanwhile, it looks like the top nine or so is what's close together up here. And then a little separation back to Carson Gum, who was last scored ninth. So I actually make that the top eight. And actually, I see a slight buckle on the hood of the 19 of Carson Gum. And also even a slight buckle on Benjamin Miles' hood. So yeah, there's still a couple cars that were actually involved. In that wreck, Jay Jefferson right there, he's got a buckle on his hood, but yeah, he's slow and off the pace. And actually, it looks like Poteet managed to get something fixed with the engine, even though he's still relatively slower than everyone else. He's at least faster than he was originally. However, in the case of Seth Cole, he is still super, super slow. Jake Baskinger, it looks like... He's slow on track, and I think I see yeah, a little buckle on the front end of his car, and I think that damaged something in the motor to the point where he's now pretty much out of contention. So yeah, it looks like it's going to come down to the top eight as far as who is going to win this race. Meanwhile, Joshua Collard still hanging on to the lead. Dougie Shears trying to go for his third win in the last four or five races. He's having a very, very, very good run up here in second. But how about Chris Dollerton? We haven't really talked about him all night long. He comes into this race with a bit of a bad luck streak. 31st in points. Definitely looking to gain some momentum going into the next race in which I actually forget where we're heading to next but because of Seth Cole that ended up holding up Patrick Smith, Dougie Shears and Alex Drayton and even DJ Curtis so now the top four have broken away meanwhile Collard still hanging on strong but as I was saying with, uh, and actually now they're going to catch Jake Baskinger. Let's see how the leaders get around the 18. Slowed up a little bit. I don't know if that was enough to get the rest of that top eight back up here. Didn't look like it was quite enough. And let's stay with the 18 and see how he manages with the next four guys. 
Shears, Curtis, Drayton, and Smith. Curtis and Shears got around just fine. Drayden and Smith, they're getting held up, so that might as well have taken them two out of contention. Now they finally get around the 18. But yeah, the top four have broken away. However, you got two stragglers trying to get up there, Dougie Shears and DJ Curtis, as they're about less than a second behind Jake Rogers, but the top three are sort of working together all different manufacturers Dodge Ford Toyota Right now the highest running Chevy on the track is James Qualls who has last scored 11 So that race really impacted hard on the Chevy drivers as that was who all mostly was involved in that big one Collard looks like most likely he's going to get the most laps led bonus points at some point soon. Because ever since he had taken the lead after getting around lap traffic, no one's been a challenge to him. Although, maybe that could change because I'm going to predict within the next lap or two, the leaders are going to catch these two, Jay Jefferson and Dylan Poteet. And they're both going to catch Seth Cole, so they may, the leaders may catch three cars at once, potentially. Meanwhile, Dylan Young is really, really slow on the racetrack. I'm not sure if they're just... I don't know. Something's off with a couple of cars that I didn't really see get involved in any way, shape, or form in that big one earlier. Well, now the leaders have caught Seth Cole, but are closing in on Poteet and Jefferson, although Dollarton and Shelley getting held up. But let's see if Collard can maneuver his way around the 31 and the 87. Right now he's stuck behind those cars. Now he finally pulls down low. Meanwhile, the 87's still causing problems, and that brought Shelly right to the back bumper of the 43. So now we got a bit of a two-car breakaway from the rest of the field. It's, looks like it's going to come down to Collard versus Shelly, potentially. As lap traffic continues to plague the majority of the field. As Seth Cole is held up... Colin Phillips and Patrick Smith, two MWR cars in this fray. But now we got a top five battle, potentially. Rogers, Shears, Dollarton, Shelley, and Collard. Although Collard is starting to pull away, considering we got side-by-side -side racing for second between Shelley and Dollarton. Shears may try and consider running three wide, however... You should think of that because considering that the wrecks we have had tonight have been caused by three wide situations going wrong, at least in one case. Meanwhile, Shears trying to run the bottom underneath of Dollarton, but Dollarton seems to have a strong race car on the outside groove. And then we got side-by-side -side for the fourth position between Jake Rogers and James Shelley. Although now they're getting ready to catch Jake Baskinger again. And I predict within the next three to four laps, they're going to catch Dylan Young. And that would put only 13 cars on the lead lap. But Baskinger actually held up Collard. We've got a new race leader, Chris Dollarton. Collard ended up getting held up by the 18. So that's going to potentially cost him the win. How uh, excuse me. However, you got to wonder if these leaders are going to have to pit one more time 
before the end of the race as when we get to the line it's going to be 10 laps to go here at Charlotte but right now uh, Dollarton hanging on but here comes Dougie Shears trying to go for a run to the inside Although, let's see if Shears can get that momentum to stick on the bottom. Right now, he's trying to make it stick. Although, they are going to catch Seth Cole very, very shortly. But let's see if Shears can get the bottom to kick in off of turn four, which is how we've seen it play out all race long. High lane off turn two, bottom lane off turn four, and they're going to split. Great job on the part of the top five for splitting Seth Cole. However, we got a new race leader, Dougie Shears, who's trying to go for win number three this season. But Joshua Collard, who led the majority of the race, he's trying to get back up here and take the lead back. And now Dollarton trying to get the lead back for himself, and he's going to get it. Although here, very shortly, they're going to catch Dylan Young, and that can have a big effect on who's going to get the lead as Dylan Young is slightly off the pace after what I would predict was either damage on pit road or he got slightly involved in that big one hard to tell which but it's now seven laps to go into coca-cola 600 and they have caught the two of Dylan Young what is the two going to do He's going to hold up the 43. Pretty much he's going to hold up everyone at once. Although, Shears, here he comes, and he's got a full head of steam on the 43. Although, the two moves down low, but Dougie Shears, he's coming in the pit road. Huge game-changing moment right there. Pit stops are going to occur here close to the end. Colin Phillips going to follow suit with Dougie Shears to come in the pit road but Joshua Collard has the race lead back at least for now but can he keep it depending on what's gonna happen with these final pit stops in fact all the leaders are coming in anybody behind the leader is going to stay out no it looks like everyone's going to be coming in at once but what about lap cars They're going to stay out. But all lead lap drivers have now entered pit road. But let's watch Joshua Card. It looks like everyone's going to go with just fuel only. It seems like tires aren't really a huge factor. However, Jake Rogers actually got out ahead. But what about Dougie Shears? Can he outduel? The majority of the field that came out of pit road doesn't look like it. Jake Rogers is going to have the race lead now. So the field, as we cycle through when we come here to four laps to go, Jake Rogers is the race leader now. Second, Dougie Shears. Third, Joshua Collard. Fourth, James Shelley. Fifth will now be Paul Menick. Sixth will now be Patrick Smith. Seventh. DJ Curtis, 8th James Qualls, 9th Colin Phillips, 10th Alex Drayton, 11th Benjamin Miles, 12th I suspect, or actually no, maybe Chris Dollarton. I don't know, I think maybe he's close to being a lap down contact with Seth Cole. I'm not entirely sure, but does Dollarton have the race lead? Well, maybe not anymore as Rogers has just gone on by. Let's see the scoring. Is Dollarton cycled around? No, he's a lap down. Must have been a, something wrong with his pit stop. Caused them to go a lap down. Same with actually Carson Gum as well. So we're down to 11 cars on the lead lap. And it looks like it's going to be between Rogers and Shears. But does Shears have a run or actually have enough time to even go for it and you gotta keep an eye out on Dollarton who's a lap down he's still up to speed and he could easily change the outcome of everything that happens yeah. 
But when we come to the line here, <clears throat> excuse me, and Seth Cole actually stopped on pit road, I guess he's going to just wait it out for the rest of the race as the white flag is out and Jake Rogers has the race lead. And I completely messed up. I meant to say that Jake Rogers won, and I forgot my mic was muted, so I apologize if you didn't hear anything. But there's your top ten, which starts with with uh, Jake Rogers winning, ends with Alex Drayton in tenth. Then the last car on the lead lap was Benjamin Miles, and then everyone else that finished was a lap or more down, and then everyone else out of the race after more likely the big one prior to the halfway point around lap 27 and so on and so forth but congratulations to Jake Rogers for getting his first win of the season winning the Coca-Cola 600 here at Charlotte Motor Speedway thank you for watching this race we'll see you next time for where we're going next I don't know but until then here are your results rookie points and regular points heading into next week and this is Levi McIntyre signing off